Oh, Steph, you see it? Steph, we good? Yes. Have a wonderful meeting. You too. Thank you. I'll be good night. Yeah, I'm hoping. No problem. And so, hey, so you get the ammo on the ship. Okay, good. good. Very, oh, you got five guys. Yeah, yeah, I'm just worried about uh, any of our security and stuff may be blocking. Right, right, right. As long as you test the gloves. Oh, uh, we were. Testing, test, 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 one, two, one, two, three, four. 
Testing, we're testing one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four. How is it? How about that? Oh, we've had like eight. Yeah, but I feel bad saying it yeah, of course, we acknowledge that. You're both for her, those in Germany. Because they like to do it like three times. Do you know what they're saying? I kind of feel the same, too. I've walked like two and a half times. I started taking everything that's handmade because I used to canvas. And I know the feeling of rejection. Yeah, that's true. No, I do too. I've done that too. Eric, you look very Slytherin. I look Slytherin? Yeah, that's right. Well, the tie, and then you have like a, a Slytherin gold mouth and reflection. So. I guess I'm the Slytherin. No, it's the tie. Over under on 25. Over under on 25. That's how many fans we have. I'm not wrong. Yeah, there are more candidates than voters. Is it better to replace us? I'm telling her I'm going to help out. Are you campaigning for someone? Well, I don't know if I can say yet. I have to. No, I'm teasing. I am Hey, guys. I'm sorry. Now, y'all won't be sitting here doing the program. No, no, no. Okay. Oh, no, no, we will move. Oh, yeah. Rosie O'Donnell. Well, my friend, I was talking to her about it. Whatever, listen. Don't you even start. Is Vinny still a candidate? He is absolutely a candidate. I thought he didn't make it. He watched him end the article. Well, not yet. I didn't even, like, start. I want to, like, I'm going to get a did he oh, make no. oh, and thank you for bringing no. it up. I would have. <laughs> Only because I, I, I no, got only like three people got funds tonight. Yeah. Only people got funds. So now I gotta reach back out and go. Mm -hmm. You know what? I have to post for a while. No, but listen. Like, yeah. Well, you oh, should yeah. still have a conversation. No, yeah. not for the first time. Yeah, you're right. Blame the Don Schmoll, Shivani. He qualified for the second time. Because I have. He used to be an Obama. No, I'm not. Yeah, she's a lawyer. I love how that's like a totality. Her. Her. She's a lawyer. Yeah, how'd she get that's this? That's like all right. Yeah, yeah, we need to do it. Okay, great. Cool. Oh, that's okay. live. Oh, it's live. Yeah. And it's so, like, oh, yeah. if you hear our voices, is that yeah. what we're going to do? No, 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 I don't hear your yeah. voices. No, <laughs> just we can see you. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Hey, Stephanie. So they can't hear us. Um, yeah. Can't see. Yeah, yeah. Stephanie. Now, only when I say something, I'll see you. They bounce. So no. You can hear me. You want to see what it looks like? Well, actually, you know what? I can see it from here. And I think we're going to need to pan over a little. Uh, yeah, it's something like that. Well, I just got it there. Okay, there you go. Okay. See, that's my wide is wide. And that's got all the council members and the chairs. I mean, you're pretty good. Oh, is that it? That's not the wide.
So you see your wine is? And that black thing. And just walk with me. Just slowly walk down with me. Okay, got it. Yeah, move that cable out of my way. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, you can just sit everything down right there. As it goes along. If she's talking real, 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 Get all the audio. Yeah, so, so. 
Testing one, two, three, four, 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 four. Testing one, two, three, four, four, four.
I call this meeting to order of the Charter of Vision Commission of 2019. I'd like to welcome everyone to this public meeting of the Commission. I'm Gail Benjamin, the Chair of the Commission, and I am joined by the following Commissioners. Um, Dr. Merrill Tisch to my left, Reverend Clinton Miller to her left, Commissioner Lindsay, why do I do that all the time, Lindsay? Green. Green to his left, and former council member James Vaca to her left. Um, below in the dais is uh, former council member Fiella, uh, Ed Cordero, Allison Hirsch, Carl Weisbrod, former council member Sal Albanese. Uh, above and to the far right is uh, Mr. Karras. To his left is Satish Nuri. To his left is Paula Gavin. And my counsel, David Seitzer. Uh, with those commission members present, we have a quorum. Before we begin, I will entertain a motion to adopt the minutes of the Commission's last meeting on December 10th at City Hall, a copy of which has been provided to all of the Commissioners. Is there a second? Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? You want to say it? Okay. The motion carries. Since early September, this commission has heard from New Yorkers throughout the five boroughs about their ideas for improving the city charter, the city's foundational document. The charter lays out the essential functions and responsibilities of municipal government, which touch upon many different aspects of how we all live and work together in this city. Through hours of testimony at public hearings, as well as extensive engagement at events, meetings, and online, we have received ideas from hundreds of people and organizations that represent the wide cross-section of communities and perspectives that make up our great city. While a great many of the proposals we received have merit and are worthy of consideration, the reality of our limited time and resources demands that we be discerning about where to focus our efforts. We know that this is not necessarily easy. We appreciate the time and efforts of everyone who has submitted ideas, but building consensus, which is going to be necessary if this historic approach to charter revision is going to be successful, is both difficult and necessary and begins right now. Last month, in order to begin this task of focusing our work, we adopted a set of focus criteria to help guide our decision-making about the most worthwhile and impactful ideas which we would pursue. We directed the Commission staff to focus on changes that, for example, we can legally make that would likely require a referendum to accomplish and that focus on structural changes that advance important values. We have before us today the result of that work. The focus area that the staff recommends we pursue based on those criteria have been identified and grouped into four overarching buckets, elections, governance, finance, and land use. We are going to discuss each bucket separately. I, of course, welcome a robust discussion on each. It is my hope, however, that we are then able to decide together to move forward with a specific set of focus areas that will help guide the critical next stage of our work. With that, let's begin with elections. The staff recommends that the commission, Carl? Yeah, Madam Chair, before we go into a specific discussion of um, specific buckets, and I know we're going to do that, uh, I would ask that you at least entertain uh, a couple of just general observations. W one, as I said before, and I want to reiterate, um, this is a very unusual commission in the sense that everyone who has been appointed to this commission has been appointed by somebody who will not hold their current office in 2022. And therefore, it liberates us 
to think about the issues that are before us in a way that is for the good of the city as a whole and not limited to a view of any particular office holder who is holding a particular office at this time. And so as we go through these buckets, I would strongly urge that we adopt a, a principle that what we recommend will take effect, whatever changes the voters of the city approve that we recommend, take effect at the beginning of 2022 um, when we will have a whole new set of, of, of office holders. Some current office holders may be in different positions than they are today, but um, by, by focusing on 2022, we have the opportunity to take personalities out of this and really focus on the issues at hand. That's point number one. Point number two, which is my second general point, and you touched on this, um, we are constrained because of actions in Albany that now permit early voting, which is, I think, a, 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 I think a very good thing, but our time is extremely limited, and so although there are many things that may come before us and that may fit within the criteria that were established by you and by this board, um, that given the time constraints we have, we really try our very best to limit, to limit the items that the staff will be researching, that experts before us will be considering, and that we as a commission will have to vote on to only the most serious um, and important issues that we possibly can because time in this respect is not our friend, it's an enemy. And so I would hate to see our focus diffused to the point where we are not effectively bringing just the most important issues to the voters um, uh, for adoption, uh, ideally beginning uh, uh, in the next round of uh, municipal elections, which will, for the most part, be January 1st, 2022. Thank you. Um, Carl, I, I understand what you're saying, but I don't think that that's before us at this moment. And if you would like to discuss it further, I am happy to discuss when transitions might be appropriate and whether they would be appropriate for different items that we might be interested in. There may be some that are appropriate for inclusion in 2022. There may be others that are appropriate for 2020. And I don't think we're ready to judge that at this point in time. Um, as to the um, topics and the broadness of them, I mean, that was, I think, the purpose of winnowing and the criteria that we gave the staff to use in winnowing down the list. Um, if you're suggesting we add a fifth criteria, uh, I'm, I think that we directed the staff in this way and that we should look at the list we have. If you think that there are topics that should be removed because you think that we either can't effectively deal with them in the amount of time we have or there are too many topics, I would certainly take a look at that. And I think the members here would be willing to discuss that, but I don't know short of that what we could kind of do in response. Yes. So is it, I guess, is it, is it fair to say that would be an, an open topic for discussion as we get into specific pro proposals going forward when certain of them should be effective and not effective? Yes. Okay. That's helpful, I think, because I, I concur with a lot of Carl's concerns about certain things being, seeming inappropriate to, to implement um, in the very near term outside of a few things. Okay, we will certainly have that discussion as we hone in on the ideas that are actually going to be before us. I think it's very hard to have that conversation in the abstract. Anyone else? Okay. 
Proposals for the establishment of ranked choice voting system, also known as instant runoff voting or a similar system, and related election process reforms, for example, the elimination of duplicative primary elections. Um, these are the items that the staff is recommending that the Commission focus on based on examining the over 600 ideas and winnowing them down by considering the criteria that we directed them to use. Proposals relating to how members of the redistricting commission are selected, who may serve on such commission, and how district maps are drawn and adopted. And proposals relating to the structure of the campaign finance board, for example, how members of the board are appointed, and establishing an alternative public campaign financing system, such as a democracy voucher system. Are there any comments or points of discussion? Sal? You've got to turn on your mic. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I uh, would like to add to the uh, elections focus areas one, one particular item, which is further study of nonpartisan elections. Uh, we've seen, we've seen uh, uh, a number of uh, elections where the, a growing number of uh, independents in the city, which is the registration is growing by leaps and bounds, are basically penalized under our New York City elections because they can't vote in primaries. And I, I believe that nonpartisan elections will increase participation. Um, it will uh, also emulate what other cities are doing, Chicago, Philadelphia. This is not... This is not revolutionary. Um, and uh, I think that I would like some experts to come in to talk about the issue in depth. Uh, I've had a couple conversations with uh, uh, the dean of uh, New York Law School, Anthony Crow, who headed a commission in 2003 that uh, actually put nonpartisan elections on the ballot, and it failed, be, and, and it failed for a number of unique, character, unique dynamics that I'd like for him to come in and explain. But I think it's worthwhile, worthwhile exploring. Um, actually, it's, it's, it's nothing revolutionary, because we're going through a nonpartisan election as we speak. And, uh, the public advocate's race is a nonpartisan election. So um, I think it would be negligent of us not to at least consider it because one of the things we're charged with is increasing participation. Um, we saw a lot of the Sanders supporters who were furious over the way uh, the election uh, took place in the primary and the presidential race. A lot of them were unable to vote uh, because it wasn't an open primary. Uh, so I, th I think that it's a serious issue. It goes to the very core of what we're about, which is democracy, and I think we should study it further. So I'm proposing um, that we add it to the elections list and further explore it as, as we move on. So that's my, that's my uh, motion. Allison and then Carl. Um, I would like to respectfully disagree and urge the commissioners to vote no on that motion. I think there are a number of... <clears throat> reasons why nonpartisan elections are um, actually anti-democratic, not pro-democratic. First of all, not the least of which being the city uh, voters overwhelmingly, I think it was two to one, uh, rejected nonpartisan elections on the ballot in 2005, I believe. Um, but parties, as unpopular as they may be, actually have a role to play in signaling things to voters. In a world of imperfect information where voters don't have the capacity to learn every intimate detail about the policy positions of each of the various candidates running, parties are important. And absent the party imprimatur, um, nonpartisan elections actually tend to favor very wealthy candidates who have the resources to get a message out, whether it's true or not, in a way to um, 
uh, shift the outcome of an election because there are no other markers on the ballot to direct a voter on, on where to go. Also, I just want to make one comment that Philadelphia does not have nonpartisan elections. I can't speak to Chicago, but um, I know that, that Philly doesn't. So I think that there is a lot of uh, – there are a lot of items on this elections – in this elections bucket that I think is particularly ranked choice voting um, that – well, <clears throat> excuse me – have the impact of expanding democracy in this city, but I think nonpartisan elections will take us backwards. Carl? Um, I, I would just like to in part reiterate what Allison just said um, and underscore this as an example of how we should be pretty careful about what we uh, decide to put on our agenda and what we shouldn't decide to put on our agenda. Um, there are items that, uh, Madam Chair, that you listed under um, uh, election, the elections bucket, some that I think have merit, some that personally I uh, don't necessarily agree with, but those are the items that are on, uh, are in the bucket right, right now. Um, as Allison said, this, uh, even leaving aside the, the merits or demerits of um, of nonpartisan elections. The voters of this city rejected nonpartisan elections 70 30 um, uh, when this went before the voters uh, uh, last time. And this was not a close election. This was an overwhelming, an overwhelming rejection of the idea. Whether the idea has merit uh, or not, I don't think that we, given the limited time we have, should be relitigating issues that the voters rejected so overwhelmingly um, in previous charter commissions. And therefore, um, I also do not believe that this should be added to the agenda. Carl, um, I'm sorry, Sal? You uh, just uh, uh, I, I, the fact is that uh, Candidates run with party labels. We're seeing that in this public advocate race. This is not, once again, revolutionary. This is going on in this city right now as we speak. We have a nonpartisan election. So I don't, I don't subscribe to the, to the theory that uh, uh, some wealthy person can come along and steal the race. That, that can happen right now uh, as, uh, under any circumstances because we don't really have great campaign finance laws. Uh, people run under party labels in nonpartisan elections. People will know what party they belong to. It will just allow folks like the Green Party, can't, uh, Green Party folks and, and, and um, the folks that belong to other parties to participate in New York City elections. Right now, they're blocked, and these elections are basically, um, unfortunately, uh, controlled by or dominated by special interests, especially in low turnout elections. We want to increase the bucket. But nevertheless, nevertheless, I think it's, it's an important issue, and it should at least be studied. I don't know what the conclusion will be. I think what some of the points that were raised by, uh, by my colleagues here um, are certainly, certainly rebuttable. But we need some experts to come in who have experience with nonpartisan elections. The, the election that uh, that Commissioner Weisbrot referred to in 2003 had some very unique dynamics, which I think uh, we should bring in the folks that were actually on the commission, or one or two of them. I'd like to invite the New York Law School dean to come in, because he headed that commission, to talk about the unique dynamics that caused that to be defeated. Um, I, I, I I, I believe we should at least give this an opportunity to move ahead. How we come out at the end is, you know, is based on, on, on tremendous, tremendous feedback from the folks that are really experts in that area. And there are a number of folks in the city that are very knowledgeable. Uh, there have been a couple of books written about it. We should hear from those folks. That's all I'm saying. Thank you, Sal. Thank you, Sal. I think, um Council Member Fiella. Thank you, Madam Chair. And let me first of all thank you and, and thank the staff for taking 
all of that material. Remember, we're here tonight because we've listened for a lot of hours, including I think seven hours in this chamber last time, to a lot of people. And the staff did a great job in corralling those items and assorting them into four logical focal areas for us. I look at tonight's meeting as an important juncture in the life of this commission, but not uh, a determinative one. And it's on that basis that I offer these following remarks. Um, this is what I said at the previous two charter commissions, and I've indicated here in October. The lack of citizen participation in the electoral process, the absence of meaningful competition from municipal offices, and the exclusion of registered voters from the decisive round of elections, in most cases, seriously weakens our democracy and the credibility of our governmental institutions and office holders. I want to associate my remarks with uh, Council Member Albanese, Commissioner Albanese, in this regard. This is not the determinative round. I think that nonpartisan elections, uh, the absence of them from the bucket will raise as much criticism <laughs> from some quarters as the presence of them in the bucket will from others. The thing is, the absence of it from at least a discussion will undermine, in my view, the integrity of the, the process with respect to this bucket that we're calling elections. It's one tool in the arsenal of tools that may be available to us going forward as a city. I don't think any of us here would deny that this city's turnout rate and this city's participation rate, while consistent with a lot of municipalities and state governments around the nation, is abysmal for the Big Apple. It's an embarrassment. It's an utter embarrassment. And for us to exclude any one tool from the debate would probably do us more harm to our credibility uh, than adding it. Having said that, this is my third go-around, and I want to be very clear that I hold no illusions. When you start talking about items like this, which I'm on record of favoring, but I recognize we also run the risk of then becoming all consumed by one issue. So what I would urge is that um, we consider uh, adopting Commissioner Albanese's request, but also holding ourselves uh, to a standard of, okay, the second we see this getting too far astray and consuming all of our energies, we pull back. Because I've been down this road before, and we've been down it collectively, i.e., the Public Advocate's Office. There have been commissions who have been totally consumed once they adopted even talking about the issue. The mistake they made was allowing the outside forces, in my view, to dictate uh, the terms. I have no problem discussing nonpartisans. The staff will have no problem, in my view, updating the material because there's been more. I guarantee there are two issues which our staff will have more information available to them than any other staffs have because they've been around this long. Term limits? and nonpartisan elections. So essentially, it's taking those voluminous materials out of the dustbin, looking at them and updating them so that we get a new real-time analysis. But I don't see the harm because this is not a determinative meeting. We're simply at a point and at a juncture where we continue uh, to try to bring more clarity and focus to our efforts. But I do think it would behoove us not to add that, at least into the discussion mix, uh, for fear that we'll be criticized as having been fearful of something. And I'm looking first and foremost at the integrity of the Commission's work, not a particular issue or where I may fall today or fall at the end of the process, but at the integrity of the Commission's work. 
We have, that, we have that role as well. I've got my own issues. You all have your own issues. But at the end of the day, we all have the moral responsibility to protect the integrity of a Charter Commission's work. So I would urge that we look at, yes, having that discussion, listening, and then, if we so choose, moving forward at a next juncture, at a more important juncture, where we then have to start to say yay or nay on a given issue. Allison? Uh, thank you, um, Chairperson. I, I just want to say that, you know, thinking about Carl's comments earlier, earlier about capacity, I feel like we can all acknowledge that voter turnout and participation is a problem and a challenge. But there are a variety of ways to change our election system that are, um, have been proven to be more effective in engaging members of third parties or small parties than nonpartisan elections, such as proportional representation, um, like electing multi-candidate council districts. Instead of 51 districts, you have 17 with three council members per, right? That's one possibility. In the city of Philadelphia or Washington, D.C., there is a requirement that a certain number of the council seats are filled by minority parties. So in the city of Hartford, actually, the, it's a Democrat and WFP council because those are the two largest parties in the city. In Philadelphia, it's a Democrat Republican excuse me, Republican Council. So I think the challenge here is that I feel like if we were to add nonpartisan um, elections to the scope, our scope of work, I think that it would be incumbent upon us to add all of the variety of ways of changing our election system to add um, the possibility of increased voter engagement. And that seems daunting. <clears throat> overwhelming and like a radical change in direction from the discussions and um, program that the commission wants to adopt. And I, so I, I think that it would, um, as you said, Commissioner, completely overwhelm us. Paula? I too would like to reinforce the uh, point of view that we have to prioritize and we collectively said we wanted to pick those things that would have the greatest impact for dozens of years. So I have a general statement that as we vote tonight we should think about that but also we're not supporting in our vote, we are supporting further evaluation in all cases. So I think it's also important to remind ourselves we need to prioritize, we need to look for the things that have the highest impact, but tonight we are only voting on further study, not support. That is correct. Council Member Fiella, or Commissioner Fiella. I, uh, um, I, I appreciate uh, your remarks, Commissioner, and uh, I agree that there are a lot of potential tools available. The only caveat I would make is that in New York City, we decided a long time ago to have nonpartisan elections. They exist. They are in practice. I've always maintained the position that we're somewhat bipolar in this city when it comes to our election process, that we turn on one system and then we turn on another, depending upon the timing. So there's there's the one reality here, and that is that we already have nonpartisans. It's not something new. It would be a discussion on whether or not to expand it, but not whether or not to introduce it. That's the only difference I would see with respect to nonpartisans versus these other avenues. Can I make a point? Yes. Um, Commissioner Tisch? I'm not uh, an expert on nonpartisan elections, but I will tell you that I think a re one of the reasons for low turnout in the city, and I don't mean to disparage any agency, is really the lack of accountability in the functionality of the Board of Elections. For the last two cycles of, I hope I'm not insulting anyone, I just want to improve the situation. I have to say the last two cycles, I waited online once for two hours, once for three and a half hours, having my grandchildren brought back and forth so they can participate in the electoral process only to have only to abandon uh, my right to vote because nothing worked. So I believe with what's coming down from Albany in terms of early elections, technological advances in allowing um, voting. people to use modernity as we look at the electoral, I think we're going to see improvements in the turnout because I think people are actually 
more engaged than ever before. I happen to agree with Commissioner Weisbrot and with Allison that um, we'll get off track with some of these really important things that you can accomplish if we take up this issue again. And we should let some of the easy fixes take place first. And you know I'm a great fan of yours, so it pains me to disagree with you. <laughs> deeply. I'm deeply pained by it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> but they're wrong, and you're right. Exactly. <laughs> Anyone else? OK. Um, I would say the discussion is finished. And we have on the floor a motion from Sal to a proposed amendment to the list on elections to add examination of nonpartisan elections to the list that we have before us. Is there a second? A, a, a second to? The motion to add. Yes, aye. I ask the council to, is, we, we've had discussion. Is there anyone else who wants to discuss this motion? I ask council to call the roll, please. Commissioner Albanese? Four. Commissioner Karras? No. Commissioner Cordero? Four. Commissioner Fiala? Aye. Commissioner Gavin? No. Commissioner Green? No. Commissioner Hirsch? No. Commissioner Miller? Aye. Commissioner Nori? No. Commissioner Tisch? No. Commissioner Vaca? No. Commissioner Weisbrod? No. You didn't call me. Chair Benjamin? <laughs> no. The vote is four in the affirmative, nine in the negative. The motion fails. Okay. Uh, the next bucket we have is governance. The staff recommend that the commission focus on the following. Proposals for establishing an advice and consent process for the appointment of certain government officials. For example, corporation counsel. Ah, I'm told that I have erred also we need to vote on the whole bucket um, for elections. Just uh, the, the remaining bucket that was originally proposed. Correct, the elections bucket, which we are voting on as is. Um, I move that we vote. Is there a second? Second. Uh, discussion? I, I just want to. Carl? I, I just. I, I, I will vote in support of this. I just want to reiterate what um, Commissioner Gavin said that a vote at this point is simply a vote to uh, uh, have the staff study these items. That's and correct. Not necessarily the, uh, agree or disagree with. A vote now is a vote to explore further. I agree with them, I disagree with, but that we're voting just very clearly for further study and nothing else at this point. That is correct. Okay, thank you. David? Commissioner Albanese? Four. Commissioner Karras? Four. Commissioner Cordero? Four. Commissioner Fiala? Aye. Commissioner Gavin? Four. Commissioner Green? Aye. Commissioner Hirsch? Aye. Commissioner Miller? Aye. Commissioner Nori? Aye. Commissioner Tisch? Yes. Commissioner Vaca? Yes. Commissioner Weisbrod? Yes. Chair Benjamin? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. As I said, we have governance, and um, the first proposal for establishing an advice and consent, I've uh, mentioned. Uh, the second is a proposal to expand and enhance the role of borough presidents and or borough level governance. Evaluating the role and accountability of the Corporation Council. 
proposals relating to the structure of the Conflicts of Interest Board and lobbying by certain officials after their public service has ended, proposals related to enhancing systems of police accountability. This will include exploring improvements to the structure, power, and role of the Civilian Complaint Review Board and the manner in which police discipline is handled, examining the role of the public advocate and considering proposals modifying the powers and responsibilities of that office, proposals relating to reconstituting the Board of Statutory Consolidation, whose purpose is to periodically review the Charter and other laws with an eye towards reorganizing and simplifying those laws. Are there any comments or points of discussion? I have a question. Um, there's been a lot thrown into this bucket called governance. Um, and my question is, is when they s it goes back to Carl's point. I'm sorry, you can't hear me? Sorry, I'm sorry. It goes back to Carl's point. There are some things here that would require deep and deliberative um, consultation, and if you are going to study all of them, then I would suggest to you very strongly that the important ones, not that they're not all important, but ones where you might find broad consensus, where you could be find great appeal, might fall off the wayside because there's only so much you can take on. So I'm curious as to why this bucket of governance was so broadly defined? I would say it was broadly defined because these ideas didn't fall out when the criteria were applied. Um, so they are still here to be considered. Um, if there are particular ones you think should be removed, I would take that amendment and we can talk about that, but I think given the fact that we gave staff a set of criteria to use, this is what was left. And it's, since they all kind of involve how government itself is put together, they called it the governance one. So then the next step would be uh, a vote of yes, we should study these, would be that all of these would be studied um, with the same level of seriousness and seriousness of purpose. And, uh, and I would say yes, but some might fall out sooner um, if, for instance, there are other laws that, might, that currently would accomplish the same thing. Um, or if the resources that it would take to make a serious effort at uh, really coming up with ideas, we would certainly come back to the commissioners, much like this, possibly, and say we think that we, we would propose that this idea be subject to a new set of criteria. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think we can all agree that all of these ideas may not be pursued equally, that there will be more winnowing as time progresses. Okay, that, that's what I was trying to get. There will be more. Yes. Okay. Um, I have trouble with all these items being grouped into one. Um, there's two items here that I have difficulty with, and I don't know if I can vote for exploring further an entire package when um, two of them in particular are at variance with uh, my beliefs. Uh, as a matter of policy, I uh, do not believe that uh, anyone besides the mayor should remove a commissioner. I do not believe in giving any entity an impeachment right over a commissioner. And that's what the first one um, talks about. And when you speak of the public advocate, uh, the option to eliminate the public advocate's office is not there, and I think that that should be further explored. Well, with, with respect to the public advocate, I believe that is there in examining the role of the public advocate, that that does include eliminating it. Well, it says modifying the powers, so I'd like to amend it if I can. I want to be clear that the op an option 
that many people have discussed is uh, whether or not we need a public advocate um, at all. So you would like to, is this an amendment that you're proposing? If that's that possible. You... I'd like to amend the public advocate to specifically indicate that we will consider. Uh, How about the... if we add the words modifying, including, eliminating? That's fine. Is that an amendment that that's everyone it. would accept? And, um, Any further discussion on that amendment? No objection. So we are amending that to say examining the role of the public advocate and consider proposals modifying, including eliminating that office. And can we further clarify, or am I reading it correctly, concerning the appointment and removing of officials? What we are saying, if I read this correctly, is that the commissioner is appointed by the mayor, whoever that mayor is, can be impeached. It says here, removed, which is oh. to impeach, what, remove, to throw out. Okay. And our system of government that we've had in this city has always indicated that the mayor appoints the commissioners and the mayor is held accountable, and we want accountability if those commissioners don't perform. So here we are saying that they can be removed by someone other than the mayor. Well, we're saying, and we're not saying, the public has asked that we examine the idea. Um, there has been some discussion, particularly with respect to certain public officials, such as Corporation Council, who, in fact, is the lawyer for all of the elected officials of the city, not simply the mayor. Um, and there has been discussion about other offices of that nature and how, when they are responsible to a wider range of elected officials, how those officials have a say. I'm not well, saying that I would support the idea or not support the idea, but I do think we have heard it. And, and people have asked for solutions, and that is one of them. And just to clarify, regarding Corp Council, point number three, I agree with those who have advocated that we evaluate the Corp Council and evaluate um, the entire um, representation issue. But that is point number three, and I would be in favor of that. But I don't think that Corp Council belongs in the first point. I think the object, I think the main thrust there, we can take Corp Council out, which I think it should be in which to a degree we did in point three. But I think that point one gets to the core of whether or not commissioners serve at the pleasure of the mayor or whether or not commissioners can be, mo be removed by other entities. And then of course we have to talk about cause and we have to talk about many other issues that will come up should we decide in favor of that. But That's I just correct. think it's a, it's a concept that I, I, I think that going there is uh, something that uh, could lead us down a path that we may not want to go. I think one and th points one and three are saying different things. Um, one is about the role and accountability of one office, Corporation Council. Um, and not how the Corporation Council is appointed or to whom they are responsible. I think proposal number one relates to that, uh, how the Corporation Council is made responsible. Um, so I think that they're different things. I would also say, as Carl said at the beginning, that these are not ideas that any of us necessarily endorse but ideas that have been brought forward that met the criteria and that would be examined. The examination might say this is the silliest idea since non-sliced bread. But do they deserve to be examined was the question, and do they meet the criteria? Um, I saw, oh, um, uh, Council Member Seitzer has asked that we do a voice vote on the last amendment. 
um, adding the words. I lost track of the last amendment. The, the, yes, Remember. the last amendment amended the third item. And oh, on the public advocate. Yes, on the public advocate to would now read examining the role of the public advocate and consider proposals modifying the powers and responsibilities of that office, including its elimination. Well, then shouldn't you be give equal shrift? I mean, I, I love my borough president. I love my borough presidents, but again, it just looks like you're pre presenting one side of the equation, making them more powerful. If you're going to study something, you need to study both sides. So just like with the public advocate, you might study eliminating or enhancing. You, on the borough presidents, you just talk about expanding and enhancing. So isn't that already making a decision? I, I just think that the language here needs to be consistent. Okay, so you would also like to, let me see. I don't want you to get me wrong. I am not for eliminating the borough presidents or diminishing their role. <laughs> Let me be clear. I'm for consistency of language and the opportunity to study something in an equitable way so oh. that both sides of the equation are examined. Okay. Let me say this, though. We already had a voice vote, okay. and we voted yes on the modification of the public advocate, and I'm told we can't do a voice vote, so can we just... I'm just making a point about consistency. You should do it every week. Okay. So this is on the, the public advocate adding the words, including its elimination. Mm -hmm. Is there a second? I can't second. I put second. Yeah. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. Okay. Are you? No. Okay. I'm not making an amendment. I'm just saying that this is a public document and you've got to be consistent. You cannot come out and say, because your statement here on borough presidents is saying we've made a decision to enhance their roles. And perhaps there are those who don't feel their roles should be enhanced. I'm not one of them, but. I think that this language is based on the the comments and public testimony that we had people who came before us who did suggest eliminating um, on the borough presidents. I don't believe we had any person who came before us, letters or otherwise, that suggested the elimination of the borough president. Those who spoke spoke about enhancing the role or, at a minimum, enhancing the role of borough governance, um, even if it wasn't through the borough president's office. That's why I think they were different. Okay. Um, Fair enough. And we. Um, I think Paula, and then it was Allison, and then did I see another hand, Carl? I just wanted to uh, reinforce the point that when we study um, these, we need to be sure they do meet the criteria. I know we're going to vote on it as a bucket. For example, on advice and consent, I do not believe it fits the criteria. I know that there are others who do. So I think when we evaluate it, I just want to make the point that we're going to evaluate it against the criteria. So again, we pick the most impactful items. Allison and then Carl. At the risk of being the most hated person on the commission, I would like to um, uh, respectfully ask that we actually add an item to this bucket, um, <clears throat> I think, uh, and consider the establishment of a chief diversity officer in the office of the mayor and a requirement that uh, would extend to a requirement for a chief diversity officer at a senior level in every agency of the city. I think we can all agree that the diversity of our city and the diversity of our city's workforce, both the contracted workforce and uh, directly employed workforce, is of paramount importance to us and that we want our government to be representative of the people who live here. Um, and I think that is a value that all of the people on the commission have and all of the folks who appoint us have. Uh, but the challenge is if there is not somebody whose job it is to wake up every day to ensure that value is um, enacted, it 
won't happen. It is too easy to maintain status quo when it comes to issues of diversity um, uh, in hiring and procurement and other just general city governance. Um, and so I think that it is important to consider the idea of changing the charter to require a chief diversity officer. I know um, I want to speak to uh, Commissioner um, Tish asked a question earlier uh, to me uh, whether uh, the city agencies already have this. Um, I do want to speak to the Comptroller's Office does an annual report, and in the most recent report, um, seven out, only seven out of 32 city agencies have a chief diversity officer, and that includes the Comptroller's Office, so six out of uh, 32 city agencies, and of those six, only four of them are at a senior enough position to actually answer directly to the commissioner and have agency-wide oversight. In the other agencies, they're actually a mid-level uh, uh, individual who does not actually have agency-wide oversight. So I do think this is a problem that is worth us investigating more and looking into how to best solve. Thank you, Alan. Um, Carl, did you? I had a, se a separate point to make, but I don't know if okay. Allison's motion is on the table now. Yeah, I think we have to decide which motions are on the table, and that's mine. Um, we still have, uh, Jimmy, did you, Council Member Vaca? Ah. Did you make a motion um, about the, quote, impeachment or removal of officers? Was that a motion? Well, I would make a motion. Uh -huh. I would make a motion um, that we strike Corporation Council out of that first point and leave it on point three so that we can, I think that you just cited that, uh, Madam Chair, as an example. So I would want to leave Corp Council in point three and um, I'm, I'm, uh, I wanted to voice my opinion on this and um, I will allow it. I will not make a motion at this time. I, I will let it. Um, I will let it. I will not oppose it being considered. But I do tell you that uh, at a later date, I cannot see myself voting for this. Okay. Thank you, Council Member Vaca. Um, so now I think we just got the chief diversity officer. Right. So now the motion that is before us is, I believe, um, Commissioner Hirsch has proposed a motion to add to this bucket a chief diversity office, examine the idea of a chief diversity officer. Is that correct? Is there anyone else who would like to speak on that? Well, for purposes of opening a discussion, I will second Commissioner Hirsch's recommendation, so at least we can have a discussion about it. Okay. Dis I know that you're aware, Allison, that there was legislation recently passed by the Council that establishes an Office of Diversity and Inclusion and establishes with that a Chief Diversity Office and a Chief Diversity Officer and that that legislation is slated to be effective in May. Um, I believe that is part of the reason that that is not on the list because we don't know how that will turn out since it would appear that it has much of the responsibility that a chief diversity officer that you're describing would have. Can I respond? Thank you. Absolutely. I, um, I am aware of that legislation. I. I do not believe that the scope of that legislation uh, is, goes to the extent of uh, the charter revision proposal and the idea um, that I'm putting forward. And I, I guess I think I'm asking um, at this juncture that we can look in, we can spend time as the commission and the staff can look into, into it so we can have a further conversation to analyze whether, in fact, the legislation really does have the desired impact. Um, and scope and scale that um, some think it does or whether we need to go further. Carl? Uh, this is in, in part um, uh, a comment on the motion on the table and also uh, perhaps um, uh, f in furtherance of what Dr. Tisch said earlier. 
I think this governance section is a is a very very broad section. Um, it includes things that certainly I strongly disagree with, along with Commissioner Vaca, the notion of um, uh, uh, mayoral appointees being removed by officials other than the mayor. Um, it includes things that are extremely vague, such as borough president and borough level governance and what expand and enhance means. Um, and it includes a, a lot of other issues that we have heard a lot of uh, testimony uh, about. And I think uh, she certainly can speak for herself, but I think one, one, the point that uh, Dr. Tish was, was making is that this, this is a very broad list and has to be, has to be narrowed um, sort of sooner rather than late, later. I understand why all these items are on, on this list. Um, and again, I agree with some and disagree strongly with others. But the, 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 there is a responsibility on the part of the staff to refine this list as, um, as, 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 as quickly as possible and the schedule for doing that, I think, really has to be brought back to this commission pretty soon because these are very, very broad topics. And as we've all discussed, we have a very, very limited amount of time. Madam Chair, you pointed out that there is legislation that, uh, with respect to diversity, that is um, going to be enacted in May or will It be has been enacted already. Its implementation date its implementation, is 120 days after. Its implementation date is in May, and how exactly that fits into what um, uh, Allison is proposing, frankly, I'm, I'm not clear about. I'm perfectly happy and will support um, Commissioner uh, Hirsch's motion to include that so that we can have, at the very least, further clarification on that and see how um, I know this, the city administration is, uh, uh, does have diversity officers in several agencies, whether they're senior enough, effective enough, broad enough, I don't know. But since there is legislation that is going to be um, effective and implemented as of May, as this commission moves forward, um, I, I would, support Commissioner Hirsch's motion in the context that I think Dr. Tish mentioned earlier, which is that these really have to be prioritized and refined as quickly as possible. And I, I, I think this is a, a, an, an, a recognizing that what's on this list is a reflection of the criteria that were established and to some extent there's disagreement as to whether some of these even meet those criteria. At the very least, we should ha have a commitment from staff that this is much further refined in a very short period of time. And in that context, I would support and will support Commissioner Hirsch's motion. Okay. I would just add, though, in response to that, that one of the criteria was whether it could be done by local law. And since it has been done by local law, this one clearly could be done by local law. If people want to add this despite that, so be it. But I just feel like I had to say that it didn't meet that criteria. Just following up on what the chair said, um, uh, it, we, we do have a, a set of criteria which says that if an initiative can be passed by local law, that we would not entertain it unless it was unlikely to be passed by the council. I mean, I support a chief diversity officer. I, I think most people on this commission do, in theory. Um, but if the city council has that in the hopper at this point in time and seems they already to, adopted it. it's already adopted, why are we even entertaining this? Um, Lindsay and then Allison. Did you know, I, I, I share Commissioner Hirsch's concern about not necessarily knowing 
whether the scope of what is in that particular local law is consistent with what her proposal is really trying to get at, and we won't know until we discuss it further. And, and so I, I support her motion in that regard that we should continue to discuss it further. And, you know, just to, the, to Commissioner Albanese's point and, and your point about other things being addressable by local law, there are a number of things in other buckets that are even way past uh, local law, things that are already in active implementation that are still a subject of discussion that I, I personally disagree with whether or not they should even be included on the list, which I've said in my, in my previous comments. So I, I certainly don't think that that's a fair way to try to, to knock out this particular proposal. I wasn't trying to knock it no, out, no, no, and no. I don't really – I wasn't trying to knock it out. I was just clarifying. 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 Fair enough. Um, Allison? I think Commissioner Green uh, said what I was going to say very eloquently. Can I, can I ask Allison a question? In my experience with diversity officers, um, and I don't know what's in the proposed law, so you pardon my ignorance, but the issue is not about having the diversity officer. The issue is whether or not that diversity officer is empowered within the agency by a direct report to the CEO of that agency. I am unclear as to what is promulgated now in the law about does it just say you need to have a diversity officer or is the proposed law saying that the diversity officer needs to be part of the CEO's cabin? You know, whatever, however the agency is set up. It's just been my experience that when the diversity officer does not report to the CEO, it's an irrelevant, it's just another irrelevant checkbox. I think, um, I don't believe the legislation requires the um, diversity officers to be at that level. I think that's part of one of the reasons I wanted to submit this proposal, but I'm not actually 100% sure, but I agree 100% with your point. Well, that would be great to find out. Because if it's in Is it, Jimmy? I think it would be helpful. I just looked up the legislation, and it's intro 752 that was sponsored by Council Majority Leader Lori Cumbo. It created an Office of Diversity and Inclusion within the, within the Department of Citywide Administrative Services. The office is tasked with compiling and releasing employment statistics related to hiring, salary, and promotion of city employees disaggregated by gender, race, civil service title classification, and other categories as appropriate. It will also be tasked with developing recruitment, hiring, and career advancement procedures to achieve greater diversity in the city workforce. That's what the council passed. Um, Allison, if everyone is done speaking, Allison, would you like to clarify exactly what your amendment would say? Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't actually draft the language, but um, uh, I think that, uh, let's see, I think we should add an amendment that we study the um, <coughs> possibility of creating a chief diversity officer in City Hall and, and at each city agency. If I can speak to that motion. Is there a second? Second. second. Yeah, then. Um, Wait a minute, I can't hear if I can't see. Right, but I think Jimmy may have had the first hand oh, and yours is Jimmy, the second. Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy. Uh, the, the, there's no doubt that we have to stress diversity. I just feel that we're going to go down the same path we went down on nonpartisan elections. We stated that we would not go with nonpartisan elections because there was already so much discussion about it in the past and it occupied so much in our agenda. And we said that we would not go where there was already legislation that did what we want to do. And when I just looked this up on the Internet, because this was passed after I left the council, it, it just seems to me that we're already there and that this is already being done. Uh, I, I would just like uh, I, um, just to piggyback on what Commissioner Baker said. 
I'd like to have Commissioner Hirsch break down the difference between her proposal and the Council's proposal. I think um, I'm happy to attempt to do that. I think first and foremost, DCAS, while an important agency, is not the office of the mayor. Um, there's, and I don't know where the commissioner, I don't know if she's, she she's wasn't not, able to be here this evening, today. but um, I don't want to speak for her, but the commissioner of DCAS, the current commissioner of DCAS is on this commission, and I think she would agree that she's not the office of the mayor. And in my, you know, albeit limited experience in government, um, yes, DCAS has responsibility for a tremendous amount of procurement, and um, but it does not, it doesn't even actually have the charter, and then we'll get to this moving forward. Currently, have the authority in the charter to centralize and control all city contracts. It doesn't have authority over other agencies across the city, and so. While I think the legislation is a good step forward, and it's great that the, uh, there will be an Office of Inclusion and Diversity within DCAS, that is not the same as having um, a chief diversity officer who has a holistic view of everything the city does across all 32 agencies, across all of the different city hall departments and offices. And um, I think we need to consider a much broader approach. Thank you. It's, it's not clear to me. Um, sorry, I, I think a, a key piece from, from some of the, 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 the letters that were submitted in relation to this point is not just about the diversity uh, and retention of diverse candidates in the city of the workforce, but also how that plays out with respect to procurement. And that's a particular piece that I do not think is included in that particular legislation, just as a point of reference. Thank you. Is there anyone else? I'm just looking. I have, happen to have the legislation here. Um, I think Sal Allison wanted s some additional clarification about what you're proposing. Well, yeah, I, in the interest of economy, uh, which is you know, which is important. I mean, we had this discussion about the Bureau of Animal Welfare, where uh, you know I, I, it was one of my priorities, and uh, basically the City Council has. Uh, has discussed the possibility of passing that legislation. So, sorry? The Bureau of Animal Welfare setting up a separate agency, and the City Council is considering that. So I had, I had in the interest of economy, what I said was we're, we have so much, so much in our bucket here, so much on our plate, that I, would, I will let the Council handle it, and the, the, the animal advocates are meeting with the Speaker's office. So what I would propose here is if there's a gap between what Commissioner Hirsch is proposing and what the Council has passed, there's always the, the amendment possibility of legislation. So we don't, you know, we, we, don't have to, we don't have to deal with this item because we have so much else on our plate. So I, I would recommend that the staff speak to the Speaker's office and, and get a sense of we can if there's a difference between what Commissioner Hearst is proposing and, and what the council has passed, that let's, 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 let's figure out if the council is willing to amend the law to strengthen it before we get involved in, uh, in extensive discussions about this. Okay. I hear what you're saying, but we have an amendment currently on the floor. Um, would you consider what Sal has asked a friendly amendment to your amendment or no? I, I mean, I... I think that my understanding of the process that we're working on right now is that um, anything not in the buckets on the list, uh, that anything that we do not include in these buckets that we pass, we are precluding ourselves from taking up. And so I would say that I, I don't, I believe you need a charter amendment for this. I'm, I could be wrong. I've definitely been wrong before. And so I, um, would respectfully ask that we sort of do it in reverse, 
we leave it on the bucket list now, and one of the first thing this, things the staff does is to look to see, can the council take this up in a broader way than they already have? Is it something that is politically feasible for them to do? And let's have that discussion, and if that's the case, we can, we can go from there. Any further discussion? So is there a second to Allison's motion? Any further discussion? <laughs> David, would you call the roll? Commissioner Albanese? Aye. But he knows his friendly amendment was not accepted. No, we haven't. You're the only person who's voted. Commissioner Karras. Consistent with our criteria that we set forth, aye. Commissioner Cordero. Aye. Commissioner Fiala. I want to explain my vote. Uh, Commissioner Hirsch, I certainly don't hate you. I very much enjoy <laughs> serving with you and enjoy listening to you. Um, I'm going to vote aye because I want to be consistent as well. I had hoped to add term, uh, term limits. <laughs> <laughs> Strike that. I had hoped nonpartisan elections, uh, you know, to adopt the Albanese uh, <clears throat> um, amendment for the same reason. I think we can afford to put it in at this juncture. Here's what I know from doing three of these. We're going to issue a report. And a lot of the things we don't get to, we're going to weigh in on. And I suspect those issues that aren't ripe and I'm, I don't like doing this, but I suspect this will be one of those issues that will not be ripe because the legislation that was passed into law becomes effective in May. There won't be enough time to really determine its breadth and reach. So we'll probably weigh in with a narrative saying this is important for a future commission, uh, that they should look at this pending the outcome of a more thorough analysis from that law, that whatever that local law was. But I'm, I'm, I'm voting aye because I like you. Commissioner Gavin. I vote aye. Commissioner Green. Aye. Commissioner Hirsch. Aye. Commissioner Miller. Aye. Commissioner Norrie. Aye. Commissioner Tisch. Aye. Commissioner Vaca. I uh, will also vote aye uh, to be consistent and to uh, on the basis of uh, the request made by Mr. Albanese that I concur with that we should see where the council legislation takes effect, when it takes effect, what it does, where there are gaps, and can legislative action be taken. But I will vote aye at this time. Commissioner Weisbrod? Aye. Chair Benjamin? In the interest of consist my consistency, I vote no. Motion carries. 12 votes in the affirmative, one vote in the negative. Are there any um, other additions, subtractions? Okay, then can we vote on the amended governance category? Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Carl? Yeah, I, I just want to reiterate because it's such a broad category of uses and as seen by as as indicated in fact by the amendment we just adopted that there are interim steps here and a lot of these items it seems to me really do require a great deal of refinement from staff um, and I'm, I'm looking particularly at the issue that you know Dr. Tish mentioned about enhancing the role of the borough and expanding the role of the borough president which would mean maybe we all support that conceptually but what we mean by enhancement what we mean by expansion I don't think we at this point have a clue and we really do need um, from staff on many of these items a much more refined um, uh, uh, set of questions that we can 
that we can react to. And I support the agenda. I disagree with some of the items on it, as many others have indicated, um, particularly uh, removal of officers. But on, um, but, but, but first and foremost, I really do think that staff rather expeditiously has to start refining these, these items. And that's all I have to say about it. Okay. Did you vote? <laughs> I just, I think I just seconded your motion. Okay. Motion. That was a second. Uh, please call the roll, David. Commissioner Albanese? Aye. Commissioner Karras? Aye. Commissioner Cordero? Aye. Commissioner Fiala? Aye. Commissioner Gavin? Aye. Commissioner Green? Aye. Commissioner Hirsch? Aye. Commissioner Miller? Aye. Commissioner Nori? Aye. Commissioner Vaca? Aye. Commissioner Weisbrod? Aye. Chair Benjamin? Aye. And if you could hold the roll call for a few seconds, Commissioner Tisch will be right back. Um, yeah. Um, now we'll be moving on to finance. The staff recommends that the commission focus on the following. Proposals relating to the structure of the city budget, including making budget units of appro appropriation more detailed or program-based and aligning the capital budget with discrete projects. The authority of the council to establish terms and conditions on appropriations, the timing of budget modifications concerning the financial plan, empowerment powers, and the timing and making of revenue estimates. Proposals relating to the development of a comprehensive city planning framework for capital spending and land use. This would include consideration of proposals to restore the Department of City Planning's role in the capital budget process. Proposals relating to providing an independent budget, for example, a guaranteed minimal minimum level of funding or the ability to propose their own funding levels for certain offices such as the public advocate or the civilian complaint review board. Proposals relating to how public pension investment decisions are made and by whom. Exploring ways to streamline the procurement process in order to ensure timely payments to contractors and grantees as well as timely access to capital funding particularly for nonprofit service providers. This would include an examination of the composition of the Procurement Policy Board. Examining the contract registration process, including proposals for a mechanism to resolve disputes between the mayor and the comptroller with respect to the approval and registration of a given contract. And proposals for a mechanism to establish procurement and contracting, as well as reimbursement, policy objectives, including consideration of allowing or clarifying that sub such objectives can be established by local law. Uh, and I believe we left the vote open for Commissioner Tisch. For, what, oh, sorry about that. I was for Allison's motion. I'm, I'm yeah, well, you voted on that. Oh, okay. This is on the rest oh, of the category. Oh, definitely, yes. So, provided... Aye, aye, aye. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Vote off and vote early. <laughs> <laughs> is, is there any discussion? Paula? A little bit of a um, broken record here, but I, I think we need to prioritize again based on impact because a number of these, such as the budget, the city budget, a lot of that is going on right now. So I think as we go forward and evaluate, I just want to urge us to prioritize based on criteria and impact. And I would say I, I, I read two small pieces in the post yesterday, but I don't know any of the details of what exactly is being proposed in terms of procurement or the budget or any of the things that the mayor did mention. So I would agree with you that as we see those proposals, we may be able to eliminate some of these, but not having seen anything, these are items that were brought up 
in a number of meetings and in public by both not-for-profits, by electeds, by the public. So I, I, I'm mindful of what you say and agree that once we see what that is, we should act accordingly. Any other? I, uh, I'm sorry. Is that okay? Yeah. Uh, I just caution uh, when we start talking about independent budgets, I think you're going to have a lot of people in this city that want independent budgets, boy. And I caution you. Uh, I think um, you're talking about individuals or entities that have specific oversight powers. I see the public advocate in CCRB. They have more than o CCRB has more than oversight, but the public advocate, let's say right now, is an advocate. She has advo she or he has advocate powers. But you have community boards that are mandated in the city charter. You have borough presidents mandated in the city charter. Do uh, if we start talking about independent budgets, I think that you'll have a lot of people knocking at your doors and they will be saying that they want to establish their own budgets too. And I don't know if that's fiscally possible or responsible. And we will look at that very closely. Okay. Hearing no discussion, I'm going to move that we move to a vote. Is there a second? I second. Discussion? Call the roll, David. Commissioner Albanese? Aye. Commissioner Karras? Aye. Commissioner Cordero? Aye. Commissioner Fiala? Aye. Commissioner Gavin? Aye. Commissioner Hirsch? Aye. Commissioner Miller? Aye. Commissioner Nori? Aye. Commissioner Tisch? Aye. Commissioner Vaca? Aye. Commissioner Weisbrod? Aye. Chair Benjamin? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. And last but not least, um, we have land use. Surprise, surprise. The staff recommends the commission focus on the following. Proposals relating to the development of a comprehensive city planning framework for capital spending and land use. This would include considerations of proposals for changes to the composition of the City Planning Commission. Proposals relating to the composition of the Franchise and Concession Review Committee, the manner in which the terms of franchises are established, the manner and frequency of determining what franchises are necessary, and a mechanism for requiring that needed franchises be implemented. Evaluation of ULERP, in including consideration of proposals related to establishing a pre-ULERP mechanism to allow involvement excuse my tongue is just like stuck in my mouth, um, by communities, community boards, borough president, and other relevant stakeholders earlier in ULERP, allowing a borough president to include an alternative application to be considered alongside an application originating with the city or city-affiliated entities, exploring ways to ensure that necessary mitigation of development impacts occur, Clarifying ULERP timelines, examining the universe of projects covered by ULERP and the manner in which ULERP modifications by the City Council and post-ULERP modification to existing approvals are administered, examining the composition of the Board of Standards and Appeals and its review of applications. Comments? Discussion? Amendments? Removals? Amendment. Uh, what? Jim? Yes. Yeah. I'd like to propose one amendment to this. I, I see here that we're uh, discussing the composition of the City Planning Commission, the FCRC, uh, and the BSA, and sort of all the major land use boards and commissions except the LPC. And I just, and I'm not talking about substantive changes to the landmarks laws, which can be done by legislation, and I don't think the, the commission should spend time doing that. Uh, but in terms of the composition, if we think, for example, that 
Uh, these other landmarks boards are, just to give an example, two mayoral controlled. Uh, why would we exempt the LPC from that analysis? Uh, and I know uh, we've had some proposals also in terms of qualifications for LPC members. So, uh, and uh, also conscious and sharing uh, many of your concerns with bandwidth, you know, I would clearly state that to me the two priority issues in here are comprehensive planning and ULERP, uh, you know, studying the ULERP process. Uh, but if we are going to look at the other boards that we look at uh, four out of four instead of three out of four. Uh, so I would suggest uh, adding Landmarks Preservation Commission, examine the composition, qualifications, and possibility of remuneration of the members. Just to be contrary, Jim, you are aware that the Landmarks Commission is not doing land use. They're doing design. They're doing historicity. The, uh, the, uh, They're not doing land use. Just, just saying. I hear you. I, I, perhaps one could make that argument as well about certain concessions <laughs> and uh, franchises. Um, but there is an amend I, you're making an amendment. Uh, is there anyone who? I'd like to second that, Madam Chair, uh, for two reasons. One, I like Jim, too. <laughs> two, I'm hoping so you, you all remember you don't, this. It's <laughs> you don't, you don't two, like Sal? Two, Yes, I do. I, did I back you up? <laughs> um, two, and, and, and more substantial. <clears throat> I think this issue is going to wind up being played out in part in the governance issue when we start talking about some of the power brokers anyway. So it seems to me it, it fits right in. It, it probably should just be thrown in there so that we've got all of our bases covered. So I would second that motion. Okay. Any further discussion? Would you call the roll, please? We're voting on an amendment to this category to include the composition and qualifications and, possibility. and the possibility of remuneration of the Landmarks Preservation Commission as another proposal. Commissioner Albanese? Aye. Commissioner Karras? Aye. Commissioner Cordero? <coughs> Commissioner Fiala? Aye. Commissioner Gavin? Aye. Commissioner Green? Oh. Commissioner Hirsch? Aye. Commissioner Miller? Aye. Commissioner Nori? Aye. Commissioner Tisch? But if you all seem to think we should do this, then I guess we should. <laughs> okay. And I'm besides, with you. you like Jim. I never talk about anything I know nothing about, but in this case, why not? I mean, I don't know enough about it, and I don't want to abstain, so I go I. He's a universal receiver, everyone's love. <laughs> Mr. Vaca. I'll vote yes. Maybe the Landmarks Commission will come to the Bronx and do some work. You have Mr. several Landmarks districts. Commissioner Weisbrod? Um, I, I just want to underscore the Chair's very keen observations and astute observations from her long experience with <laughs> to land use generally. Um, but with that, I will vote aye. Chair Benjamin. For consistency, I'll vote no. Motion carries. Um, now we're on to, are there any other additions to this category? Deletions? If not, I move that we vote on this. Is there a second? Second. Would you call the roll, please? Well, it's oh, discussion. Discussion, I'm sorry. Um, I would just like to say, and this goes back to uh, the, the broader discussion we've had since the beginning of, um, of uh, this meeting, that as we heard public testimony and as I dare say everyone in this commission recognizes, that this is the area that
probably will occupy the vast, vast, vast majority of the uh, staff and, and our commission's time and discussion. Um, and it goes to the heart of um, how we function as a city and how we function going forward. I am not, uh, I, I'm going to vote I on this, um, on, on the agenda because these are items that did in fact all come up in the uh, um, public testimony that we heard. But I'm not particularly, um, in fact, I'm in general unhappy with the wording of many of these items and the, uh, the tilt in, in how, how we are going to be examining them because these are really, really, really difficult, trenchant issues and I think it's going to require an awful lot of time on uh, the part of the staff and the part of this commission, which is again one reason why so many of the items that um, are in some of the other buckets I'm concerned to, to, is, is going to affect our, our bandwidth. Um, and one of the issues that Commissioner Faella mentioned, which I, I think is worth noting here, is how land use itself ties into so, these other issues so closely, especially when thinking about what the role of the borough president should be, whether it should be expanded, whether it should be different, um, uh, what the, uh, how governance works generally, all of that will, will be reflected in this area. And I am, uh, as, a, as, as the most dynamic city on earth and something I think we're all extremely proud of and a city that is now um, uh, a beacon for the entire world and has diversity that we have and the, um, the, the attraction that we have and the need for not only to continue that growth and growth in our economy, but at the same time uh, also um, balance that with uh, a respect for neighborhoods. This is just such an important issue and I just think we should be extremely careful and thoughtful going forward. And how we do that uh, I think is going to be really reflect ultimately um, the success or failure of this commission. So that's just a comment. Yeah, and we'll be counting on you, Carl, and your knowledge through the years of both the successes and the failures of the land use processes, both for different stakeholders as well as for the city body politic. We will be relying on you. And you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Who's but many been, of the people, been with me on many of these battles. <laughs> many of the people on this commission have had experience in the land use arena, whether it's as a stakeholder, as an elected official, as a public member of a community. Uh, people have been involved in these issues, and uh, we need all of you in order to really examine this and come up with how this system is working and where if po we can make it work for more people. And, 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 and I'm, yeah. Can I say one other thing which I think um, is uh, I I important here? It's, it's mainly reflected in the land use area, but it's reflected in other areas uh, that we're considering as well, which is the charter that we're operating under and have now operated under for 30, 30 years. Um, uh, I think is uh, was a very carefully done, nothing that's ever happened and certainly nothing in the political arena that's ever happened is, is perfect. But the 1989 charter uh, which provided us and voters approved the, the government that we have and the 
the, fundamentally the, the appropriate balance between executive and legislative powers on the one hand and the appropriate balance between citywide needs and, and, and local neighborhood needs on the other um, has, ser has served us, I think, f f fairly well. And to me, and I think we heard much testimony about it uh, during the public our public process both implicitly and explicitly is that um, the, the fun, that fundamental balance is, um, is correct and that what we're really trying to do here and land use is the area where this gets most reflected is, is, um, is, is correct and modify um, uh, things that we didn't really consider in 1989 and things that on the margins um, should be changed. But that the fundamental of fundamentals of what, what we, we as a city did and how the city of New York now operates has served us um, extremely well over the past 30 years and that um, certainly as I look at how we proceed in this area, I, will largely bear that in mind. I haven't had an opportunity yet in any of these meetings to comment on uh, the sage words of uh, Commissioner Weisberg. Now I have an opportunity to weigh in. I agree with you. And I think it's so important that well, I agree with you on, 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 on this premise. It is so important for commissioners who undertake this very serious charge to not come in hell-bent on tearing down. This was an unbelievably monumental undertaking three decades ago, trying to hold together a city that was constitutionally <laughs> deemed unsound. And when you consider the sheer volume of people the diverse stakeholders, all of the interest at play, the balance that was struck and that has lasted for nearly three decades is a testament to the resiliency of the city. It's very easy for those of us in public life to do this, you know, like the French aristocrat who was holding a dinner party, get up and heard a mob running down the street and says, excuse me, my dinner guest, I see a mob running down the street. I have to go and lead them and find out where they're going, right? It's easy for us to do that. I think your charge is both a noble one and a very, very important one, and that is that we understand that overall, at its core, the structure that was put in place has served the city well, given the very, very diverse needs of this very, very large, large, unlike there's no other city in America, right? No other city in America, no other budget of any city in America. It's really, despite itself, worked exceedingly well. So I want you to know, uh, I view our role as civic doctors, surgeons. We come in with a scalpel, I hope, not an ax. Because, yeah, there's an awful lot of anxiety out there. But uh, our job is to make sure that we first, just like a doctor, we do no harm. And then we try to do... Uh, work that is restorative, re uh, repair, or to think about the future. But your words were not lost on me, Commissioner. Sal? Uh, the land use issue will be uh, significantly important. I, I mean, as you travel around the city, uh, despite the fact that the city's doing fairly well, uh, uh, there, there is a there's a sense that, you know, the middle class, the working class, the poor are being driven out of the city by, by land use policies. And uh, I think we, we've got to, something's out of sync. Uh, we, we've got to look at other stakeholders, as you pointed out, Madam Chair, that have been impacted by, by the uh, land use policies that, that have not taken into consideration, in my view and view of many others around the city, the needs of, you know, everyday New Yorkers. Um, it, it certainly has taken care of uh, very wealthy New Yorkers. It's taken care of, uh, you know, a, f a lot of foreign interests that have bought real estate in this town. 
But I think, uh, I think that we could use a little rebalancing here and figure out how we can, how we can have a city that has a multi, not only multi-ethnic, but multi-economic classes that can afford to live in New York City going forward because we're slowly losing that. So uh, this, this will be a challenge, um, and uh, I look forward to it. But I, I, from my view, it's important that we have a city that uh, has, uh, uh, has a place for all New Yorkers, whether they be very wealthy, working, poor, and what have you. And I think we're, we've, we have lost that, um, as you can see by the battles around rezoning around the city of New York. Um, from um, from uh, uh, Crown Heights to uh, uh, to parts of the Bronx, uh, uh, th there's huge huge battles going on. And uh, if we can make a difference there, make things better, and make the, and make the city a fairer place uh, with with a balanced land use approach, I think then we would we would have achieved something. Thank you. Call the roll. Commissioner Albanese. Aye. Commissioner Karras? Aye. Commissioner Cordero? Aye. Commissioner Fiala? Aye. Commissioner Gavin? Aye. Commissioner Hirsch? Aye. Commissioner Miller? Aye. Commissioner Nori? Aye. Commissioner Tisch? Aye. Commissioner Vaca? Aye. Commissioner Weisbrod? Aye. Chair Benjamin? I'd like to explain my vote. Uh, I'm going to vote aye. <laughs> but um, I would like to also give my, my thoughts about what, are, what I see my role here as part of the commission. I do think, and I was here in 1989, I, was, I represented the controller on the Board of Estimate, and I sat on the Board of Estimate for many years. Um, I worked at the Department of Environmental Protection, and I was there. Uh, when we first started doing environmental reviews of projects. I worked at the Health and Hospitals Corporation. I have a long history in the city, and after that at the council. I've been involved in all sides of the issue. In 1989, the biggest issue was that the Board of Estimate had been declared illegal, and what were we going to do about it? The Commission could have decided to simply change the voting structure of the Board of Estimate and continue to have a bicameral body. They chose not to do that and to do something that in many ways was more radical, but it did result in a different balance of power. Once the Board of Estimate was gone, much of the Board's power went to the Mayor, some of it went to the City Council. There was a balancing that they attempted to do in finding local versus citywide pushes and pulls, and how that would be balanced governmentally. Part of what I think we're doing is looking 30 years later at the changes that have taken place in this city, including but not limited to term limits, which has changed the balance of a legislative body that had time on its side that could be powerful um, with a mayor who could also be powerful. Um, term limits has changed some of that, and that is part of what I think this analysis is going to look at, whether given those factors, do we need to make any changes? Do we need to rejigger, rebalance? Do we need to, if we see in our analysis that there are ways in which Sal's question, that particular groups have not been systematically encouraged to participate in government, in elections. How can we address that? So while I think you're right that in 1989 what they did basically got many things right, I have no objections and I hope people don't to examining whether those are still doing what they were intended to do and whether what they were intended to do is the right thing now. I vote aye. Motion carries unanimously. Okay, I'd like to thank everyone here, particularly the commissioners, the staff, and you, the public, who have come 
today and who have sat and listened to us and I hope heard that this is a very serious attempt at how our city is to be governed in the future. And I invite you back for all of our meetings. We'll be posting on our website what we've done today so all of you can look at it, uh, respond to it. You can respond on our website, on Twitter. You can tweet at us. You can write a letter and send it snail mail if you'd like. <laughs> um, but we welcome the interaction with you and we hope to have a lot more of it. Um, we will also in the coming days be posting a schedule of our, our next stage. We'll be having experts come and talk about different issues that in these buckets that we've raised. Those will be public meetings also. Um, and we will be posting schedules and attendance of who will be at those meetings and what the next steps are. We hope to continue to engage you. We hope to see you again. Thank you very much. And thank you also to staff who I think have done a very terrific job in putting this all together for us. And I move that we adjourn the meeting. Second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Meeting adjourned. What? I said it's the chair's back then. Hi. And when you mentioned does indeed. And that's one reason why this particular legislation, we hope that we're being called as expert witnesses. We have lawyers involved. We have other people involved. As far as the expert witnesses, you have to speak to the staff. But as, as you could see, there was no controversy about at least including this issue among the buckets. Of yeah, things. we also want to, you know, have a lawyer. We've done all this research. We've talked to this year next year. They're all... They're all interconnected. Thanks, Commissioner. Thanks to meet you.